This video is the next in a series by the American College of Surgeons Cancer Surgery Standards Program and will cover the new operative standards 5.3 and 5.4, which deal with central lymph node biopsy and axillary lymph node dissection for breast cancer. The American College of Surgeons launched the Cancer Surgery Standards Program, CSSP, in July of 2020 in light of growing evidence that adhe adherence to specific operative techniques during cancer surgery directly improves key patient outcomes. Recently, six operative standards have been adopted for COC accreditation. This video focuses on the breast cancer-related operative standards, sentinel lymph node biopsy and axillary dissection, and their proper documentation in the operative report. We will begin with operative standard 5.3, Sentinel lymph node biopsy for breast cancer. There are two components to standard 5.3 that we will discuss in detail. The first occurs in the operating room. All sentinel nodes for breast cancer must be diligently searched for using tracers, palpation, and pre-placed clips when applicable. These nodes must be removed and subjected to pathologic analysis. The second involves appropriate documentation. Operative reports for sentinel lymph node biopsies must include several key elements in synoptic format. Notably, this standard is relevant to procedures being performed with curative intent, as compliance assessed will be conducted only for these cases. As for the timeline, implementation of this standard should be ongoing, and site visits in 2024 will assess the 2023 cases with a goal of at least 70% compliance. We will now focus in detail on the operative aspect of this standard. In the NSABP B32 study, Median sentinel lymph node yield was 2, with an interquartile range of 1 to 4. And as you can see in the graph on the right, as sentinel lymph node yield went up, false negative rates went down, illustrating that identifying all sentinel lymph nodes improves staging accuracy. Thus, when performing a sentinel lymph node biopsy, one must perform a diligent search for all sentinel lymph nodes. The approach to this depends on the type of tracer or dye used. Fulfilling this component of the standard involves searching for and removing all colored nodes and non-colored nodes at the end of a colored lymphatic channel when dye is used, removing radioactive nodes when radio tracer is used, and removing all suspiciously palpable nodes, and removing clip nodes when applicable. Once this has been done in the operating room, we can then turn our attention to appropriate documentation, which is the second part of the standard. First and foremost, these key elements must be reported in synoptic format. A completely narrative note that covers these elements will not be compliant. Surgeons may include a narrative portion in their note if they desire, but the required elements must be covered in synoptic format. A properly built operative report must answer all of the questions in the left column, and the surgeon must choose an appropriate response for each from a predefined list of options. Specifically, this involves selecting whether the procedure is being done with curative intent, selecting what type of tracer is used, specifying if this is upfront surgery or surgery following new adjuvant therapy, selecting whether all colored nodes or non-colored nodes present at the end of a dye-filled lymphatic channel were removed, indicating whether all significantly radioactive nodes were removed, stating whether all palpable nodes were removed, and specifying if any biopsy clipped nodes were removed if this is applicable. We will now move on to discuss standard 5.4 on axillary dissection for breast cancer. Again, there are two components for standard 5.4 that we will discuss in detail. The first occurs in the operating room. Actually, lymph node dissections for breast cancer should include removal of level one and level two lymph nodes within the anatomic boundaries of the axilla with preservation of key neuro neurovascular structures. The second involves appropriate documentation. The operative reports for axillary dissection must document several key elements in synoptic format. Again, the standard will be applied to procedures being performed with curative intent, as compliance assessment will only be conducted for these cases. The expected timeline for compliance with this standard is the same as for standard 5.3. The borders of the axilla form a triangle which includes the axillary vein superiorly, the latissimus dorsi laterally, and the chest wall or serratus anterior medially. Most of the axillary lymph nodes are found in levels 1 and 2, lateral to and deep to the pectoralis minor, and removal of these lymph nodes should be included in all axillary dissections for breast cancer. Level 3, medial to the pectoralis minor, typically has low lymph node yields, and it is uncommon to have breast cancer mets in these nodes. For this reason, level 3 lymph nodes should not be routinely removed for breast cancer procedures. 
However, level 3 dissection should be considered if nodes in that area appear to be clinically involved on preoperative or intraoperative assessment. This standard also addresses nerve preservation during axillary dissection. Motor and sensory nerves should be clearly identified and preserved unless this would compromise oncologic outcomes, as would be the case if the tumor was encasing the nerves. Motor nerves include the thoracodorsal and the long thoracic nerves. Injury to the motor nerves can cause muscle atrophy and motor deficits. Sensory nerves to be aware of are the intercostal brachial nerves, where injury can cause paresthesia and decreased quality of life. Once this has been done in the operating room, we can turn our attention to appropriate documentation, which is the second part of the standard. This table summarizes the key components required in synoptic format for standard 5.4. As with the previous standard, the key elements must be reported in synoptic format. A completely narrative report that covers the elements will not be compliant. A properly built operative report must include all of the following features in the left column in synoptic format and the surgeon must choose an appropriate response for each from a predefined list of options. Specifically, this involves selecting whether the procedure is being done with curative intent, selecting whether this, the resection was performed within the boundaries of the axilla, and if not, why, selecting whether specific nerves were identified and preserved, and if not, why, and whether level 3 lymph nodes were removed, and if so, why were they removed? We will now discuss the timeline of implementation of the standards and measures of compliance. As of 2022, sites were required to, to document final plans for implementation of these standards and to conduct internal audits. Site reviews have begun in 2023 and are assessing final plans for compliance. Site visits in 2024 will assess operative reports from 2023 with a goal compliance for the initial site visit of 70%. In 2025, reviewers will assess for 80% compliance with these standards. To that end, we will now discuss some strategies to optimize compliance with these standards. There are many ways to help ensure that programs achieve compliance with these measures. First, educate surgeons on how to appropriately document the proper technique for breast cancer procedures. Education of all relevant staff at tumor boards is a great way to quickly and easily disseminate this information and emphasize the importance of COC standards across the multidisciplinary team. Next, ensure operative standards for central lymph node biopsy and axillary dissection include the COC required elements and responses in synoptic format. Details must be clearly documented in the note. Resources on the operative report requirements are available on the ACS CSSP website, www.facs.org CSSP. And lastly, open communication between surgeons and registrars is key to success in promoting compliance with these standards. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to visit our website at www.facs.org CSSP or contact us at CSSP at FACS.org. Thank you for your attention and for your commitment to improve quality of care for those with cancer.